Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I rise to highlight a really important initiative that's been launched thanks to the vision and hard work of representatives of my local community. Last, last month, we held the first meeting of a Tackling Drugs and Alcohol Committee at Edelong Diggers on the peninsula. And this Friday, the committee will meet again. Tackling the problem of drugs and alcohol is a critical issue and one that impacts families and communities right across the Central Coast. I'd like to start by recognising Bill Jackson, the CEO of Etalong Diggers, who came to me with the idea to start this committee. And he began by asking the question, can we do more? And the answer he determined as he spoke to me was yes. And so out of this concern, out of this desire by Bill Jackson, a, 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 a fantastic leader in our local community, out of his interest and his ability to see an opportunity to make a difference, this committee was created. And in talking with Bill and specialist represent, representatives, and in fact our police and our health representatives, as well as with parents and local residents in my electorate, it became pretty clear to me, Mr Deputy Speaker, that this is a committee, this is a community, I should say, asking what we can do to help. It's a strong sign that people on the Central Coast want to make a real and demonstrable difference in tackling issues related to drugs and alcohol. At our first meeting, we heard from a number of influential local leaders from our community, including government and non-government health representatives, club and pub licensees and managers, including Superintendent Daniel Sullivan from the Brisbane Water Local Area Command, Tina Davies, the Regional Liaison Officer representing the New South Wales State Government, Steve Childs, Service Manager, Drugs and Alcohol from the Central Coast Local, Local Health District, and I'd also like to acknowledge the CEO, Matt Hanrahan, who has been doing some important and fantastic work in this space. Andrew Tuck, CEO of Central Coast, uh, of of Coast Community Connections, Julie Clark, Project Officer of Family Drug Support, Russell Cooper from the Gosford RSL and Ben Bradley representing Davistown RSL Club, Daniel Bryan from the Central Coast Leagues Club, Tim McGavin from Echelong Bowling Club and Zane Treadwell from the Central Coast Hotel. And during the course of the morning's meetings, there was some terrific discussion outlining some of the serious challenges facing our region but what might be the possible local opportunities to make a difference as well in our community. And one of the proposals to emerge from this discussion was the idea that people suspected of being drug affected and banned potentially from one licensed venue could also potentially be stopped from entering all pubs and clubs in the Brisbane Water local area at command. This concept's actually based around the Brisbane Water Liquor Accord, and if agreed to and if implemented, could see the then banned one, banned from all policy extended, if it seemed to be helping to lower alcohol and drug fueled violence. As Superintendent Sullivan said, people have to know that consequences matter. There was also discussions around applying for Category 3 funding under, under the New South Wales Clubs Grant Scheme to run local awareness and educational campaigns. And this idea that since seen some fantastic coverage in our local media came from the clubs and pubs industry representatives who are looking to be able to direct some of their resources obtained through the club's grant schemes to programs that can make a real difference to us locally. In particular, there was a, a very strong will to use these funds to tackle drug and alcohol problems in our region in a lasting and a positive way. We heard during the committee meeting that around eight out of 10 crimes involve alcohol and that there's a similar rate of alcohol abuse when it comes to domestic violence. Other people around the table raised other important issues, including around education and also the challenge that some young people on the Central Coast simply think they want to be able to try it. And of course, this can have severe flow on effects to families who also need in turn education and support in order to be able to get through some of the challenges that they face. So it's clear from this committee and from feedback from people in our electorate about the importance of a community-led action in this area. In fact, in recent months, a drug and alcohol treatment service on the peninsula was given funding certainty by this government for another year, Coast Community Connections at Woi Woi. This organisation offers long-term treatment and rehabilitation programs, offering their services to help individuals and families affected by substance abuse. 
One of the programs, the Evolution Youth Service Alcohol and Other Drugs Project, known as Evolution AOD, is a youth-focused service that provides counselling to young people aged between 12 and 18 who experience problems due to the use and misuse of legal and illicit drugs. The counsellor works with young people in our community to develop and implement education and early intervention programs, facilitating therapeutic groups, providing assessment and brief intervention to young people. They're assisted by a youth support worker who engages young people, building and strengthening relationships with their young people and with their families. Mr Deputy Speaker, I'd also like to be able to speak briefly on the issue of ICE. While I understand that the National ICE Task Force has been working hard at considering potential next steps, on a community level, we've also been actively discussing what can be done. There's a clear understanding, and we saw this actually in discussions with our committee, that the fight against illegal drugs can only be effective when the or can be best effective when the community and our law enfor enforcement agencies work together. Information from members of the public is an essential part of helping police and other agencies bust drug manufacturer, manufacturing and its distribution. And that's why, to encourage the community fight against the ice epidemic, the government has invested $1 million to help establish a national Dobbiner dealer campaign. The campaign will ask community members to report people who are dealing illicit, uh, illegal drugs and activity that is associated with drug labs and distribution. ICE is ruining individuals, destroying families and hurting communities like ours on the Central Coast. While governments and police and even our stakeholder committee that met recently can make laws and undertake operational activities, the community is an essential partner in the fight against ICE. Mr Deputy Speaker, a key point that was raised within the community is the response to advertising and awareness. Independent evaluation into a recent campaign found that 94 per cent of youth who saw the ads said they'd taken some action as a result, either by talking to peers or their parents or by changing their thinking about ICE. And 51 per cent of at-risk youth who had seen the ads said they'd now avoid using ICE. Mr Deputy Speaker, I'd also like to place on record how the Coalition Government is aware of the need to promote responsible alcohol consumption in our community as well. We're undertaking a range of activities, including funding of, the 19, of $19 million over four years to continue the successful Good Sports program and leading the development of the next national alcohol strategy in collaboration with states and territories. But still, there's a lot of work to be done, and so I look forward to Friday's meeting of our Tackling Drugs and Alcohol Committee to continue the important work done so far with our community on the Central Coast.